Well, it's all about what isn't isn't in your power, in your control. And if it's not in your control, um, you know, don't waste time and energy and emotions on yes. it. That's it's an irrational thing. Yeah. Largely, almost entirely, that's fair enough, I think. Yeah. But not entirely though. Yeah. But not entirely. But that is what they're asking of you. That's what a Stoic does ask of you to for it to be entirely. So they would say something like, um, you know, don't be envious of other people's achievements. Yeah. It's out of your control what other people are doing, really. Um, you shouldn't really be envious. Um, you know, uh, that's that's a that's a great piece of advice, I think. Yeah. Um, but 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 another way, another version of that, another branch off of that exact same school of thought is that you can't control whether your own child's gonna get a, a terminal disease and die. Yeah. So um so don't get attached to your child. They're asking the impossible, actually. It's sort of asking the impossible. Um, I, I, so they take it to to the to nth extreme. degree. Yeah, yes, they take yes, it to yes. the nth degree. I think that's my that's my problem. Largely, it's it's all good, but uh. I think that the the key notion here to bear in mind is the notion of desire. And there is this mm -hmm. idea that mm -hmm. the more mm -hmm. we desire, the more dependent our tranquility becomes on things that are not our control. And on the second quote, I'll just say that uh, we read, remember that desire contains in it the hope of obtaining that which you desire. And the profession in aversion is that you will not fall into that which you attempt to avoid. So mm -hmm. he says that desire and hope go together. When you desire to something, you hope that you attain it. When you want to avoid something, you hope that you will avoid it. And it's this hope that is sort of something that Stoics would say is what is a problem. Mm -hmm. Because in hoping and expecting things to be otherwise than they will be, or wanting things to have been otherwise than they were, and wanting things to be otherwise than what they are, we sort of open ourselves to not accepting the world and being open, being, let's say, vulnerable, psychologically speaking, with respect to things that are not under our control. So it seems to me that the idea here is that we should stop desiring things being different than what they are. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I don't know how I think about this. I yeah, don't I think that hope is... I disagree. I don't think that... I think Nietzsche says somewhere also that hope is uh, the greatest nemesis of mankind. I don't, I don't agree with that. Yeah, no, me neither. There's something, there's certain strains of Buddhism where they say, just yeah. don't desire things in the first place. Yeah, the idea that hope is your enemy, I don't agree with that. Yeah. No, 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 no. That way lies, I believe, uh, despair. Yes. Um, no, there's nothing wrong with hope. I mean, again, it can be taken to too, too far a degree. Yes. Um, and uh, I, I get that. But to, to abandon all hope. No, 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 no. no but, hope is extremely important. Without hope, there's a bit in Shawshank Redemption, isn't there? When, yeah. uh, do you know, you know yeah, that of bit? Course. Where yeah. Andy Dufresne comes out of the hole, he talks yeah. about hope. They can't ever take the hope away from me. Yeah. And um, Morgan Freeman says, you need to abandon hope. Hope's dangerous. Because, uh, well, it, it, yes. it just goes to show, no, hope is very, very important. I think without hope, without the idea that you could be better in the future, things, or even you, or the world, could be better, that you hope for better things. If you abandon that, yeah, that's a very, very dark avenue to go down. And just to finish my point on that, um, the Stoics absolutely accept that. Seneca said, um, yeah, and when you realise that, feel free to kill yourself. That's literally yes. what he says a few times. Yeah. He says, yeah, it's Opt life, out. Li life is just full of absolute misery. And whenever you feel the need, cut your wrists. Turn I, your wrists is what he said, isn't he? You can turn your wrists at any moment. Feel free to kill yourself. It's like, I, well, I, yeah, I think well, that... Wait, well, what are we doing now? What are we talking about now? Yeah. I think lack of hope is bad. And I really think mm, that mm, many dangerous. people who do this, who preach this, are fatalists. And in a way... We hear many parents do this with respect to their children when they say, no, don't uh, dream. To dream is to basically 
become miserable. Yeah, you can't win, don't try. You can win, don't try. Exactly. Just to tell a small child that you can't yeah. win, don't try. That's terrible. Yes. And I mean, terrible. The point is, at least, at least try. And no matter what the results are, it doesn't matter. Be prepared to not achieve the results, but in trying at least seems to me to be something valuable in itself. Oh yeah, you haven't got much else in life. Yeah. Other than to try, there isn't that much else. Yes. To do in life other than give it a try. And we could say that in life, we can never freeze the universe and say, okay, this is the end moment. And we judge things by consequences. We always experience life in motion. We mm -hmm. experience life in terms of action. Mm -hmm. So it's, it seems to me that at least effort matters on its own. You called it fatalism a moment ago. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. There's something despite I think a lot of stoicism can be applied in a brilliant, great way to people's lives, largely, yeah. there's this element of fatalism at, at, at its core, which I cannot agree with. I don't agree with. I think it's dangerous even. Just accept yeah. these injustices that are happening to you. It's wrong of you to get emotional about it or to do anything about it, to have hope that you could do anything about it. I mean, I just... I, I won't accept that. I think that's wrong. I, I agree with you. And I think that one of the things that are good here about the quote, which, you know, to just be fair, I want to try to be as fair as possible, is that what I do find healthy is meditation and realization that many, many times effort may be up to us, but the consequences of our actions may not be mm -hmm. up to us. Mm -hmm. So... It seems to me that there's no problem in saying, okay, I want to try and I'll try. But if when things get bad and uh, we don't achieve our goals, well, sometimes like, okay, we may be a bit frustrated, but move on, mm. let, let go. Well, tomorrow is a new day. Mm. Mm. So it seems to me that mm. this is a healthy bit where we can extract from it. Mm. That's where I think the, the Stoics go a bit too far, where they say, yeah. um, you know, don't be, don't be so attached to, say, let's say your goals. Yeah. Don't be so attached to them that if they're disappointed, you're sort of broken by it. Okay, that's good. That's all well and good. But they often go, well, they do go further and say, don't have those goals in the first place. Yeah. Well, that I, can't, I don't agree with. Um, you know, this idea, I think, how you behave, how people behave, when you've lost, yeah. when you've tried, and things, it was out of your control, it was always out of your control, but you gave it a try and you lost. How you get up from that. Yeah, that's, that's really important. Stoicism can really help you with it. Yes. Uh, so, I, But it doesn't help with other cases. It doesn't help when, for instance, okay, if things are not that bad, we shouldn't fetishize uh, suffering and uh, right. as an occasion for self-mastery. Yeah, I don't think so. We should, we should so, just right. cherish the good and... Try yeah. to maintain it. Yeah. And there is hope in that. But okay, it's human. Now, quotes four and five, they get a very controversial. So from quote four, I'll say one thing. <laughs> Men are disturbed not by the things which happen, but, that, but by their opinions about the things. For example, death is nothing terrible, for if it were, it would have seemed so to Socrates. For the opinion about death, that it is terrible, is the terrible thing. When then we are impeded or disturbed or grieved, let us never blame others, but ourselves, that is, our opinions. It is the act of an ill-instructed man to blame others for his own bad condition. It is the act of one who has begun to be instructed to lay blame on himself, and of one whose instruction is completed, neither to blame another nor himself. So, this seems to me to be interesting and it's, it has a lot of things here. But first thing is that it shows us that for Stoics, or at least for Epictetus, there are three levels of operation, at least three levels of belief. One is the level of the vulgar people, we could say, where mm -hmm. you know, we are attached to things and we try to um, attach and desire things that are not uh, up to us. The second tier is the, 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 the level of the, those who become instructed to Stoicism, where they say, okay, it's fine to desire, but uh, you know, by all means try, but know that if things don't work your way, just 
move on, let go, forget it. And and then there is a tier of those who are in a way instructed where they have actually silenced desires, but in what sense? In the sense, not that they don't have desires, but in the sense that Stoics frequently say, don't desire things to happen as you want them to, want things to happen as they do. So this is frequently, there is a misalignment of desire and how things are. Mm -hmm. uh, the world is not as we would have it to be, for the most part. So there is a radical discrepancy between our desires and the world. Stoics say that this is the main cause of misery, and the whole idea of in Stoic instruction is the sort of silencing that desire. Mm. So they say that sort of forget those desires, stop being attached to the world, be attached only to that which is up to you. And that which is up to you is your inner freedom. To watch the full video, please become a premium member at lotuseaters.com.